We roll? Yes. Three, two, one. And good morning, everyone. Welcome in. Steve Cashel, Dr. Brian Cole. It's Sports Medicine Weekly, Chicago's premier sports medicine program. You can follow us on Twitter at SMW Home, and we have a Facebook page as well. And our website is sportsmedicineweekly.com. Happy to be joined by, as I mentioned, Dr. Cole. He is the head team physician for the Chicago Bulls, sports medicine specialist, orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Our producer is Shane Reardon. And Dr. Cole, I hope you're doing well. We're still in the middle of this COVID-19 nightmare, but obviously very important topics. We're very proud to be bringing you, uh, bringing our listeners this show. Many thanks to Mitch Rosen, Shane Reardon, everyone from the score for allowing us to continue this during this important time. And my first question for Dr. Brian Cole. Dr. Cole, uh, give us an update on calls with the NBA and Major League Baseball. And I know the Combine could still be happening, the NBA draft. Uh, what's new in that world? Well, like anything else, Steve, this has been a moving target. And it's uh, while the NBA has uh, a lot of obligations, I think what is governing the landscape is probably federal legislation followed by state legislation and uh, all pertaining to the things we've been talking about for weeks, which is let's keep the burden on the hospital system as low as possible and let's all do our job to prevent community spread. And then from there, everything else follows suit. If, if I was asked, does do we have dates for the combine, for the draft, all these other things? Absolutely not. It's nearly impossible to provide dates given the information we have. So all we really get are updates, and a lot of these updates are we don't really know. I'll tell you, on the MLB side, there's been some discussions about potentially playing all the games in Arizona, uh, if, for example. But, you know, the logistics of that are enormous when you think about it. There has to be a place for people to stay. You have to manage their food. It has to be a closed system. You've got bus drivers. You've got, you know, transportation and you can't have anyone come in or out. You probably would have to have testing to say who has had the disease and who has it now. Uh, and, and then if something happens, you gotta be able to isolate. So you can imagine the enormity of the situation. Intuitively, it sounds like a good idea to at least start playing games in isolation with a closed system, but I'm gonna tell you the logistics of that uh, are probably gonna be, uh, uh, I won't say insurmountable, because we can figure lots of things out, but I'm gonna say it's gonna be challenging. Okay, well, I want to get to our guest for this week, and uh, it is a great guest and so appropriate during this time and always one of our favorites on Sports Medicine Weekly. Karen Mulkin, a board-certified integrative health coach and eating psychology expert. Her clientele includes executive, professional athletes, men and women of all ages, students, and motivated individuals who are ready for a new level of vitality. And Karen, thanks so much for joining us uh, on this Saturday morning. How are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you doing? Everything's okay. Can't wait to get out of this nightmare, but uh, surviving. But Karen, my first question as we jump into it, and uh, this is one that um, I just had off the top of my head because it affects me and, and my wife. Uh, how safe is it, Karen, to pick out foods and vegetables that are not a packaged at a grocery store and if so best way to clean them so you know as we know this this covid virus is a weak virus and so washing our hands with soap and water and using alcohol could really help um keep our our hands and our our environment uh sanitary right and free of the virus so i've been soaking my fruits and vegetables in soapy water and sometimes I'll even spritz a little bit of alcohol in there. So I just wa I wash it really, really well. It's really important because, you know, you could have somebody touching your produce. And if you cook, if you cook your foods, you know, over 140 degrees, you're safe. Steve, I have sort of begun uh, doing this with almost like surgical precision. <laughs> when, we, when we bring things in, like grocery shopping for all of us has become a, uh, a, an event. I mean, that's one of the top three events in my life these days is trying to get food. And um, what we, you know, we, what I've advocated for, and there's some really good instructions on this, is just pick a place on your counter. You can take the things out of the bags and so forth and assume that everything potentially could be contaminated and open things up carefully, put them into another container. Just like Karen said, wash them off. 
and have one person manage it and assume you have a dirty area, that you have a transitional area where things get washed and so forth, and then you have a clean area from sort of right to left or left to right, and then at the end of it, make sure you wipe everything down properly with, uh, with uh, antiseptic or other. Very yeah, good tips. I've, been, um, I've also been taking my counters, and one side of the counter is completely sanitized and clean, and the other side is where I'll put my bags and my produce, and I'll take it out clean it and then put it on the clean side so we kind of have i guess it's kind of like what you do in surgery right you have your sanitized spot and then you have your your other areas karen i want to ask you this we know that eating more fruits and vegetables are going to help us stay healthy are there any foods in specific that are more helpful than others so foods that are loaded with flavanols first we need, I mean, you need to understand that there's been no clinically evidence-based treatments or strategies out there right now known to prevent COVID, but, you know, enjoying fruits and vegetables, and there are studies around inflammation reducing fruits and vegetables and foods that are going to pose very little risk with a you know, with the highest benefit. So, you know, before you start any supplement changes and changes in your diet, you always want to talk to your clinician, your practitioner, but um, foods that are loaded in flavanols, flavanols reduce inflammation. And those are foods like onions and apples as they contain quercetin, um, dark leafy vegetables, peppers, apples, grapes, green tea, red wine, those are loaded with quercetin. Karen, I'm curious. Um, I, you know, I was thinking uh, uh, earlier today how, or last night actually, how um, your life might actually see increased loads and demands. Everyone, it's interesting, and this is the biggest onion ever that we sort of are peeling in when you speak with different individuals about how their lives have changed from their occupation or work. I think about, you know, supplements and food and how the things we can control. I have to imagine that you've had a big demand on your time. And I'm curious, what are some of the most common things you're being asked? Does it pertain, for example, to the things we can control like, and, and add, like supplements, besides good choices like you just comp, uh, commented on? What are you being asked and what are some of your answers uh, and things that our listeners really want to know that they can do, uh, maybe as it pertains to supplements, for example? So supplements, I'm getting a lot of questions about how people can support their immune system. And some of the safest supplements out there right now would be vitamin C because there are studies um, that are proven that vitamin C can help shorten a virus. So uh, 500 milligrams at a time, maybe two times a day would be safe. Um, if you're taking too much of that, first of all, your body can't absorb it all at once, really much more than 500 milligrams at a time, and then you end up having some diarrhea. But then zinc, um, zinc 15 to 30 milligrams daily. Uh, the lozenges are known to also potentially provide direct benefit for the upper respiratory tract. Um, I'm taking mushroom extracts from host defense. And those are also known to help boost your immunity. And then quercetin, you know, along with keeping my vitamin D levels at a healthy level and a multivitamin and some fish oil to help with inflammation. But mainly I'm really sharing about eating whole foods, nine to 13 different types of colorful fruits and vegetables, because each color of these fruits and vegetables have a different health benefit to you and they are loaded with polyphenols which you can't really you can't really put in a pill you know we're constantly learning about phytonutrients in different foods so you know really we want to eat our food but for now i have been supplementing with uh, zinc and quercetin and vitamin c and some and some mushroom extracts but enjoying, you know, adding in turmeric, which has anti-inflammatory benefits. I'm also taking a turmeric curcumin supplement, but turmeric you can add to your food, and you can add a little bit of black pepper to your turmeric at a 16 to 1 ratio, and it's really going to enhance the bioavailability of um, the turmeric. Cooking with garlic, adding in healing spices that are loaded with 
Uh, flavanols, such as oregano, has antimicrobial properties. Basil, rosemary. Um, enjoying Asian mushrooms, such as shiitake mushrooms and maitake mushrooms, and adding in oyster mushrooms and lion's mane mushrooms and turkey tail. Um, green tea is loaded with antioxidants. So there's so much we can do just with our food um, and then supplement when, when necessary. Um, also want to make sure we're getting adequate amounts of protein to support immune function. So roughly a gram per kilogram of your body weight or about one half your body weight um, in grams of protein. So that would be about let's say two four ounce servings of animal protein, or um, if you're vegetarian or vegan, adding in more beans, legumes, nuts and seeds. But non-GMO tofu and tempeh are, are soy, which do have the highest concentrations of uh, plant protein. Ashel, Dr. Brian Cole, your host, our guest and one of our favorite guests and so important at this time to be talking with Karen Malkin, a board-certified integrative health coach and eating psychology expert. Uh, her website is karenmalkin.com, K-A-R-E-N-M-A-L-K-I-N.com. You can email questions at Karen at support at karenmalkin.com. I know Karen has set me up with a couple supplements, including turmeric, and I would not go through anyone else in the world besides Karen to tell me uh, where to purchase those supplements and which are the best ones. Uh, Karen, uh, next question. Are there any foods we should be avoiding during the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, definitely we should be cutting out sugar or certainly cutting cutting back on sugar and refined starches, which would be white bread, um, chips, crackers, starches that you'll find in a bag. And now is probably a really good time to ditch the junk food um, while we're home. And any of our listeners can try one of my 14-day transformation challenges, which is all whole food, eliminating sugar and gluten and dairy and no calorie counting, healthy fats, lots of colors. You know, this might be a good time to try one of my 14-day um, programs, but really try to cut back on your on your sugars. That would be very helpful. Karen, any other tips to help us all stay strong during this time? Definitely making lifestyle upgrades and really paying attention to sleep, quality and quantity sleep aiming for seven to nine hours of sleep a day. Not so easy during these stressful times, but by turning off our cell phones and our screens, reducing the blue lights, um, and keeping our bedroom dark and cool will really help support healthy sleep. And the other thing is getting outside first thing in the morning for some EMD, it's called early morning daylight, is really going to help you reset your circadian rhythm, which is going to help sleep at night. And, and then, you know, exercising in, at a moderate pace. So, you know, I call it like zone two. Not too intense, but still exercising so you can maintain health and, and support your immunity. The other thing we want to do is we really want to monitor our stress levels and make sure that we're keeping our stress at bay. So breath work, um, getting outside, really working your lungs. I mean, this, this virus attacks our respiratory system, so making sure that your lungs are nice and healthy. Deep breathing. I think I've taught our listeners the 478 breath by Dr. Andrew Weil. When you inhale through your nose to a count of four, hold your breath to a count of seven, exhale to a count of eight, four times, um, and really trying to take some time for, your, for yourself. And then getting outside in nature so that you are void of often very poor quality indoor air. Open up your windows, get outside. Being in greenery is loaded with um, health benefits. And if you're taking um, a conference call, go outside and take your call. Put your phone on mute when you're a listen only while you're taking a walk. Um, And then, you know, 
we need to physical distance, but we don't necessarily need to be social distancing. So many people are living alone, and so I encourage them to stay connected, stay connected with friends and family. People are Zooms blowing up like crazy. People are using Zoom and FaceTime and, and really making sure that you're not um, isolating yourself and you're, that you're staying connected so that you don't feel lonely. Again, our guest is Karen Malkin, board-certified integrative health coach and eating psychology expert. Karen, I know we're trying to support the local businesses that uh, are suffering during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, but what? how do you feel about, um, you know, we're not able to eat inside the restaurants, but uh, the, the takeout aspect of this and um, ordering from a restaurant and picking up from the restaurant and how they're preparing the food. What, what's your thought on that? So um, what we have done in the past, and we mostly do cook at home, but what we've done in the past to support our local restaurants is when we bring the food in, I'm wearing gloves, I've got a big garbage can, I take the food out of the containers and I put them into a clean container. And um, so that's sort of, our strategies for, for staying healthy and supporting our local restaurants. And I also want to share that my, my four sons are partnering with some local restaurants here and a local coffee shop, and they've been delivering coffee in the mornings to um, Highland Park Hospital, and they've been delivering dinners to um, the healthcare workers also in the evenings. And so that could be a nice um, project for um, for people to give back is to support your local restaurant and make arrangements with some of the ER docs to bring it over to your local hospital. And I'm, I'm also creating a new protein bar. You've tried my transformation bars. I'm creating a new brownie protein bar called the Thank You Bar, and it'll be ready in about three weeks, and I'm going to donate it to healthcare workers as a Fantastic big thank you. Stuff. Karen, that's Fantastic terrific. stuff. Karen, thank you so much again. Email questions at Karen, support at KarenMulkin.com. Karen's website is KarenMulkin.com. Stay healthy, Karen. All the best to you and your family. Thank you. You as well. Time for a short break here on Sports Medicine Weekly. When we return, Dr. Brian Cole and I will be back with our Ask the Doctor segment. Stay with us at Sports Medicine Weekly, only on... 670 